It's 2021. By now, the original Xbox console is nearly 20 years old considering it was released in late 2001. I loved this console as a kid, and still do as a adult. The nostalgia of playing old 2000s games on the original hardware just brings me joy. But the Xbox is dying. Mine? Probably yours. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to save it. No tech knowledge? Afraid of opening electronics? Assuming this video is over your head because I said tech and knowledge, this video is for you. There were eight versions of the Xbox released. Versions 1.0 to 1.5 need to be fixed. If you have version 1.6 or 1.6b, you do not need to perform this repair. You can see what version you have on the underside of the console by the serial number. Look at the last five digits. If the number begins anywhere between 20 and 33, you will need to perform this fix. These versions were equipped with a faulty capacitor. A capacitor is basically a rechargeable battery. The purpose of this battery was to save the date and time on the Xbox if the unit was ever unplugged or the power went out. Unfortunately, this capacitor degrades over time, slowly leaking an acidic substance onto the board, which will eventually eat through the components, bricking the Xbox permanently. The fix is simple. We just have to remove the capacitor. This is easy. You can do this. I want to repeat again that Xbox versions 1.6 and 1.6b do not need to be repaired. These are the Xboxes where the last five digits of the serial starts with number 41 or higher. Once we perform this repair, you will need to reset the date and time on your Xbox each time it's unplugged from power. With the power cable removed, we can start. First, we'll have to open the case. Flip the Xbox over, revealing the padded rubber feet. There are six screws to remove. Four are covered by the rubber feet, and two of them are covered under the stickers. We will begin with the four hidden screws. Start by peeling back each rubber piece to reveal a screw. Now we will remove each of the screws using a T20 torque driver. The screws take a decent amount of effort to remove, especially if the case has never been opened before. These suckers are long. You can find the location of the hidden screws using your finger. Once you locate the divot, insert your same screwdriver and begin to remove. Repeat this process for the final remaining screw. After all six screws are out, we flip the box over and start to remove the top half of the shell. It may be a little stuck, it's easy to pry from the sides to get the shell loose. With the top cover removed, we can see just how much the Xbox looks like a traditional computer, or at least one back in the early 2000s. We will have to remove the DVD reader as well as the hard drive in order to get access to the board and remove the faulty capacitor. The hard drive is removed first. Start by removing the IDE cable. Then remove the power cable. This connector can be stubborn. You can try using pliers to carefully remove this if you are having trouble with your hands. Using a T10 torque driver, remove the screw securing the mount. Grab one of the plastic edges and gently lift, carefully rocking the mount side to side until it comes undone. The rest of the power cable feeds through the plastic guides on the hard drive mount. This will need to be undone before the mount can be removed. There should be plenty of slack in the cable. Never force components if you feel resistance. Now to remove the DVD reader. There are two more T10 screws to remove. One screw is easily accessible on the right side. The screw on the left side does not have as much room and requires a longer, skinnier driver to access it. The IDE cable is disconnected next. And finally, the power cable. With these components removed, we can now see in full view the legendary board which started so much. It's really dusty. With everything apart, 
now is a great opportunity to clean it up a little. Just a couple rounds with my air mattress blower. There we go. The Xbox is definitely my favorite console of all time. So many nights staying up late playing Halo 2. Amazing what you used to be able to say on Xbox Live. The location of the problem capacitor is very distinct. Don't worry about removing the wrong one because it is the only capacitor which says Power Store Aero Gel. At least, that's how it sounds in my head when I read it. It's the medium-sized one next to the giant one. Here it is again. And again. And one more time. To remove the capacitor, we wiggle it until the metal solder holding it into place breaks loose. If done right, it will be a clean break. To demonstrate the ease of this fix, I am using my bare hands. I would recommend using tweezers or gloves for this part. The reason we are removing this capacitor is it is known to leak acid to the point of eating through the board and killing the Xbox. I should be wearing gloves, but the point is simple. Don't be afraid. You can do this. And just like that, the problem capacitor has been removed. Let's look at the area near where the capacitor was to see the acid damage. Luckily, there is practically no battery acid. A bad case would be obvious due to the tan color residue directly surrounding the problem capacitor. Just to be certain, I'll clean up the area with some isopropyl alcohol and some cotton swabs. With the console fixed, we just have to seal everything back up by doing the process in reverse. Grab the DVD reader and reconnect the power cable. Reseat the drive, then attach the IDE cable. Press firm to ensure a good connection. There are two screws. They will need to be re-secured. Next, the hard drive. Remember, we can't just put it back. This mount requires the power cable to be fed through the plastic guides. Connect the power cable to the hard drive. Then using the remaining slack, feed the cable through the grooves. Once everything is seated correctly, reconnect the IDE cable to the hard drive. Resecure the screw to the mount and tuck the IDE cable under the hook. Line up and reattach the lid until flush. The lid can only be attached one way. Flip over the Xbox. Attach and resecure all six screws. Some strength will be required, but there is no need to over tighten. Finally, replace all of the rubber feet. If your feet will no longer stick, you can fix this by using 3M adhesive. Now that we have everything sealed back up, let's power it on and make sure everything still works. So far so good. Perfect, everything works. And a quick game test. Earth, haven't seen it in years. The Xbox has been saved. Stay on your feet. If you like this video, go on and give it a like and subscribe to see future content. Thank you for watching. I'm gonna go wash my hands. <laughs>